Hey there, everyone. Uh, this is your Yankee Mad Dog Messiah here with you. So, uh, it is Sunday, uh, May 28, 2023 here, and I am going to be giving you my, uh, review of Night of Champions and where WWE is going to go, um, with all of the booking going from Night of Champions to, of course, the Money in the Bank, which is going to be on, uh, July 1st, so... That's going to be the next premium live event, and um, I got to say, um, I did not do this video uh, yesterday. I just had a busy day. I've had a busy weekend in general with my birthday, and then, of course, um, you know, watching the Celtics game earlier tonight. So I figured, you know, I'd just recuperate from doing the video that I just did with the Celtics, and... Um, Come in and talk about some WWE because we do have a pay-per-view. Now, but let me just get into this. First and foremost, I thought this was a very good show. And I want to talk about some of the highlights and um, some of the things that um, I liked about this pay-per-view. I might get into a couple of negatives, so um, let me start it off. Uh, when it comes to um, Becky Lynch and uh, Trish Stratus, um, you know how I was with the build. I mean, I did not like the build. Um, but, you know, when you do have these uh, premium live events, you know that there's going to be the hope that two of these wrestlers would exceed when the match starts. And to give credit where credit is due... Um, their grudge match was actually pretty decent, um, considering there was a low bar since it was, uh, Trish Stratus' first singles match in four years. Uh, they traded attempted finishers, uh, Becky getting both the disarmor and the manhandle slam, and, uh, Trish Stratus missing the Stratus faction, but she hits the, uh, the chick kick for a two count. And then there was a surprise. Zoe Stock. So, Zoe Stock, what happens is she reveals herself from under the ring, battered. There was a battered and bloody lynch. And, um, Zoe Stock hits the 360, the Z360, and sends her back in for Trish to pick up the win with the Stratus faction. So, this was smart for a couple of reasons. Um, it showed that Trish Stratus had outsmarted a pissed off Becky Lynch and she had to rely on help to do it. Now, this also gets Zoe into the mix and into a much more significant position um, with her going up against the likes of Nikki Cross and Candice LeRae what we've been seeing on Monday Night Raw lately. So, it is a decent match that gives a newcomer a bigger platform automatically, and that gives me a positive mop on where WWE is going to go into this. And I feel like right now, Becky Lynch is going to be out um, for blood. So, it's something fresh. I think we'll see this um, at Money in the Bank. And it is going to also set up um, a grudge match versus uh, Trish Stratus for SummerSlam in Detroit. But right now, you have to put this um, feud between Becky and Stocks going in for... Um, the biggest party of the summer. Uh, I mean, for a night at champion. I mean, money in the bank. I I know it's been a long day, um, so to say. So, anyways, um, let's get into um the next match that I want to talk about, and it is Gunther going up against um Ali. Alright, so let me 
break this down here for you. Because it's really tough to rate a Mustafa Ali and a Gutha match over the Intercontinental Championship. Because on paper, it was no real competition. But Ali had the advantage. He had um, the fans in Saudi Arabia in his corner. And the match vaulted past the low bar of like a ricochet getting squashed by Brock Lesnar. But with Mustafa getting more than a couple of hope spots against a dominant champion, Ali used his speed to keep Gunther off balance and stay in the match a lot longer than you might have expected. But he ultimately was going to lose this match to Gunther. Uh, and Gunther's win here made him an even bigger heel on the night. But he still remains impressive as an IC champion. And Ali came out of this with an opportunity to go in any number of directions. Should WWE desire to actually to do something with him. So we're waiting and see what happens with that. But I'll tell you this with Gunther. I mean. Gunther is going after that record. And you know what I'm talking about. 454 days. That's the record for the Intercontinental Championship right there. A record that's held by the Honky Tonk Man. And after this uh, match. Gunther is on 351 days. So, we're just 103 days away from uh, Gunther breaking this record. And it would be hellish if WWE decided to end this fabulous title run. Now, Triple H, he's going to go all the way to 454 and beyond with Gunther. But his reign doesn't even feel tired despite its epic length. So that's where I'm seeing this um, thing with Gunther. Uh, he's definitely going to break hockey's record. And um, yeah, let me talk about this. There's a lot of... Uh, should I talk about this or should I just wait... Um, Till we get to the end of this. Because I would want to talk about. Uh, let me see where I have a lot of the stuff going in. And I really want to talk about um, the whole Roman Reigns thing. I know that's really my emphasis of here. But you know what? Actually, um... No, we'll talk about Roman Reigns. Um, I feel like that's where I want to go into next. And I know people will be like, Oh, what, what are you going to uh, talk about um, Roman Reigns right now, man? There's a lot of cool stuff. Um, there's a couple of things that I want to get into with the likes here. So... Um, Let me get into it. Now, obviously, the big thing going in is uh, the whole story with the bloodline. And um, let me just say, after last night, holy motherfucker, was this show freaking awesome. Oh, my lanta. In the immortal words of... DJ Tanner from Full House. So WWE knows drama. And I was a little surprised that they did this because I thought they would have saved this for money in the bank and then possibly go into this at SummerSlam because there was a lot that can be said about 
the undisputed WWE Tag Team Championship main event. And there was a lot to like. Um, some stuff to criticize. But the overnet has to be positive. Because Sami Zayn, he wrestled in um, Saudi Arabia for the first time. Um, we all know why, for obvious reasons, I do not want to get into. Um, but the thing that was cool was he got to give ring introductions in Arabic. Uh, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn retained. So we don't have Roman Reigns holding more titles. That's the great news. But the bloodline right now is fractured. Because Jimmy Uso super kicked Roman Reigns and then takes Jay with him afterwards. But in addition to the uh, lengthy delays between the referees, which I did not like, and I have to put that as a con in there, you had the long drama in general playing out. Mid-match between wrestlers not involved in the match itself. And that's becoming a staple of the bloodline as of late. And then there's the issue of Roman being turned on and super kicked multiple times and still not taking a pinfall. If there ever was an opportunity to really give Sammy or KO a pelt, it was having them pin Reigns. But instead... You had Solo taking the fall. And I understand that Roman retained the titles at WrestleMania. And that's the ultimate prize right there. Not the undefeated streak. But this was a pretty decent scene. Though it was by far the biggest and best news story on the night for me in my opinion. But... Nevertheless, where do we go from here? Because we got to digest that as wrestling fans, right? We have to digest the fact that we have to see where they go with this. I, I think this is going to be something fun. It's going to be something exciting. And I mean, I can't wait. To really uh, see what happens with this Bloodline story. And that's why, you know, I've been watching more SmackDown instead of Raw. Because SmackDown is really the place to be when it comes uh, to, to this. But we'll get into it. First and foremost, you have to move on Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn from the Bloodline. And you can always revisit Sammy versus Roman Reigns one day. Or Kevin Owens versus Roman Reigns one day. But it's time for them to do something else for a while. They are the reigning undisputed tag champions after this pay-per-view. And there's a string of tags, tag teams, who could really use the rub of a match. And besides, this story with the bloodline, it no longer needs the old honorary Oos or KO, Roman. You know, I don't really want to go too far with that. And I'm hoping that Triple H and his creative side, because I know that he is doing creative um, for SmackDown. And Vince is doing the creative for Monday Night Raw. You got to draw up some new opponents for the tag team champions. And, you know, they can work both Monday Night Raw and SmackDown. But it would be cool if they were on Raw for a while and let that Bloodline stuff cool off. I mean, fuck it. I would, want, I would rather see Sammy and Kevin go up against Imperium. Imperium. Trying to get the tag team championships. And you know where this is going to go. With the bloodline. Because. 
it was pretty interesting that Jay Uso, he played Peacemaker when Jimmy was booting Roman Reigns in the chops main event. And he was the original rebel in the Bloodlines ranks back in the uh, the pandemic era of the WWE 2020. But things have changed since then because now we're in 2023 and Jimmy is the one sick and tired of Roman pushing his family around. Jay left with his brother, which means they're on the same page. And that also means that you're going to have the Usos versus Roman and Solo Sequoia. And that's going to be at Money in the Bank. You know the UK is going to be rocking for that. So I, I will say it with the UK wrestling fans, they're going to outrival Puerto Rico. And then after that, you got SummerSlam. You could have Jimmy Uso go one-on-one -on -one against Roman Reigns for the Undisputed title. And you could do the same thing with Jay Uso down the line. And what a drama this has been. Because you've gotten so many twists, turns, and memories. It's not over till it's over. And it's also going to lead to Solo Sequoia in this mix. Because I do feel that Solo is going to forgive Jimmy and Jay Uso. For what happened at Night of Champions when both of them super kicked Solo. And they were upheld when they smashed uh, Sequoia in the jaw. But didn't have time to stop and see... If he was alright before Roman showed up to chew them out. But this is a great story that WWE is telling. Because now the bloodline is crumbling. And it's going to crumble even more when Solo decides that he'd rather be with his brothers than his cousin. And you could see some kind of... um. ECW invasion vibes in the ring too because now that's going to leave Paul Heyman does he go with Solo and the Usos or does he stay with the tribal chief I don't know man because right now Sequoia that's Roman's uh, weapon right there. But you know that he's going to turn on uh, Roman at some point. And that's why you're going to see the Usos becoming a three-man squad. Anything could happen in pro wrestling. And that's why this is so fun to really cover. As a fan. I'm going to move on. Let me talk about. Seth friggin Rollins. And AJ Styles. Which. um Open up the show. Actually. I do have. um A con. And I'll get into that in a bit. Because this is a big con. Just looking at my notes over here. But anyways. How cool was that match? Seriously. How freaking cool was that match last night? Or yesterday. Wherever you were watching this pay-per-view. But anyways. Everything was on the line for this. And let's get into it. Because this match here. I did go on a little bit of a rant. Because I didn't understand why this was the first match. On this card. 
knowing the fact that AJ and Seth were going to deliver something that was going to be watchable. And we got a couple of notches above that. Now, I will say this, it wasn't a classic, it wasn't a five-star classic by any means. Or an epic struggle that will be remembered for months or years to come. But when you have both of these wrestlers hitting their signature spots throughout the duration of the match, uh, AJ, he was targeting Seth Rollins' knee in um, the latter half of the match. And that brought about a moment of doubt when Rollins, um, he was on, he was on the mat in pain while going for a stomp, and he was able to recover moments later, and then he nailed the stomp to win this match. Now this match it was hindered by a lackluster build. Because Seth Rollins, you know, he was phoned in the past two weeks. He did pre-recorded interviews. I know he was filming uh, the Captain America movie. And then, you know, the one-week tournament for this. But it's going to be up to Rollins and WWE as a whole to elevate what Already seems like a secondary world title. It, it, we all been saying it. It's a consolation prize. But right now, there are few baby faces hotter than him, and he's a good call to carry that banner. Now, when it comes to how you book this, man, oh man, oh man, what do you do? With Seth Rollins. Because. When you look at WWE. The last time. That. Raw had a full, full time world champion. Was Bobby Lashley in early 2022. And he was. Defeated. By Brock Lesnar. A part timer. And then Roman Reigns. We all know all of that stuff. I don't really want to get into that. But. As I said, creative has to have a steady stream of fine challengers for Seth Rollins. And perhaps Gunther, I will say this, once his Intercontinental Championship reign ends, he could be that guy that goes after a Seth Rollins. And then. Where do you go. When it comes to the money in the bank. Here's another name. Because we talked about this the other day right. People. What did we talk about. We talked about the fact. That. Dominic Mysterio. Could win the Money in the Bank match. And I think that's where they're going to go with this. Because we'll talk about Cody. And I know a lot of people are saying, oh, Cody Rhodes, man. Um, he should win the Money in the Bank match. Um, he should be the guy that he is going to have to throw in Roman Reigns. And I feel that's where they're going to go. I feel that where they're going to go with this is they're going to go with Dominic winning this at Money in the Bank. I feel like they're going to do it. And you know what? This time around, it will be better. I mean, the match could be better than the 22-minute street fight that they had at SummerSlam back in the Thunderdome. I, I really, truly believe that. So, uh, let's go into uh, the next match here. Well, actually, I'll talk about this briefly. Rhea Ripley. 
holy mother of God. I was right about that. You thought that Natalia was going to beat Rhea Ripley? Oh, no, 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 no. That did not happen. I mean, Rhea Ripley just absolutely dominated Natalia. And it was all because Dominic Mysterio distracted Natalia at the beginning of the match. And... I mean, this was the best case scenario for this match. I, I hate to say it, even though it was a 90-second squash. Right call. Right call. That's where I'm going with this. And then, um, one of the big things that I did like, and I can't believe I'm actually going to say this. Asuka beating Bianca Belair. Oh my god. I, I, I had Bianca Belair win in this match. Don't get me wrong. But when you got Bianca Belair holding that Raw Women's Championship for nearly 14 months... And when you look at the last two premium live event shows, you got fans cheering for the heel challengers rather than Bianca Belair. It was a matter of time before fans turned on B Belair. Because right now she was becoming the female version of John Cena. And getting the title off of her and maybe allowing her to refresh a bit might help avoid that outcome. Because she is one of the company's biggest assets. And Asuka, a newly minted heel, who embraced the cheating aspect of being a villain at Night of Champions, you know, in addition to repeatedly pulling on Belair's braid, Oscar tried to miss the champion during a quarter tussle, but missed. And this is when she challenged her in a great mood and misted her taped fingers and then used them to blind Bianca, allowing her to kick the champ's lights out. And all of a sudden, bang, we got a new champion. Now, time will tell if this was a smart move. But there definitely was a danger to wait in too long to pull the trigger and fans start turning on Bel Air. So it's understandable why they went this route. And I'm going to tell you why they went this route, okay? First, let me talk about Oscar here. Why did WWE decide to put the title on Asuka? Okay. I understand that Raw does, well, Raw technically has... A women's champion in Oscar. Or they do have. Um, let me rephrase it. Raw has Rhea Ripley as a champion. So what you can do in this situation is. Have Oscar be traded to Raw. For Rhea Ripley. And I know people will be like. Oh. That, oh they should be doing that. But also this benefits Bianca here. Because I truly feel that Bianca Belair is going to be a heel. And that's long overdue because she needs a heel run on this. Um, a long heel run 
in, on the main roster. And they don't have no more ideas for her. And this could be a blessing for Bianca Belair. I mean, she'll feel fresh on SmackDown. Especially if she starts asking why people in the stands have started booing her. But we know that fans are bored of Belia. You gotta do something different. And then you can have the Street Profits. This is how I would do it. They rally behind Bianca. And then they start to become heels. And then you can form a fraction out of that. Where Bianca is the main villain on a main show. That's how I would do it. Some people might not like my booking. But hey, that's where I'm going with that. So, that's really my pros um, of this um, of this Money in the Bank paper. I mean, the Night of Champions. I know uh, we're starting to go into Money in the Bank. But, let me talk about this um, Cody Rhodes and Brock Lesnar match. I, I guess I have to save the, the best for last. I know there's going to be some people that are going to agree, disagree with me on this. I really don't give two fucks. But we have to give WWE a heap of crap and not normalize these pay shows that are essentially sports washing for the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Now, I, I don't need to go into why I'm not a big fan of these Saudi Arabia shows. But if you're getting $50 million, more than twice as much as the most profitable WrestleMania on record for each show, I guess you'll do anything. And that anything was to have Brock Lesnar beat Cody Rhodes. Because that's where they're going with this now. They're going to have Cody feud with Brock Lesnar over the summer. And we're not going to have Cody Rhodes say, win money in the bank, and then cash it at Roman on some, at SummerSlam. They're not going to do that. They're going to wait to have Cody versus Roman at WrestleMania 40 in Philly. Because now you have Cody Rhodes losing to Brock Lesnar because Cody Rhodes has a broken arm in kayfabe. And Cody figured out early how he could use his cast to bludgeon Lesnar repeatedly. But Brock locks in a Kimura multiple times. Finally gets Cody to pass out. So we have to wait a little while longer. For Cody. To finish the story. So this match is going to happen at Money in the Bank. And that's not going to put Cody in the ladder match. At Money in the Bank. So I guess we're going to have to wait until WrestleMania 40 to see this happen. Roman and Cody Part 2. But the match was a train wreck. Because Cody Rhodes was playing the wounded baby face. Brock was being the bully and heel. And it's clear that WWE is putting more obstacles in Cody's path. Back to that road to Roman Reigns. 
So that's how you got to continue the story, huh? You got to continue the story of friggin' Cody and Brock Lesnar. This is giving me Rocky 3 vibes. Remember in Rocky 3, what happened? Rocky loses to Club Lane, right? And then Rocky wins the revenge match against Club Lane. It's a one all. I predicted this was going to happen. Or maybe, just maybe, but I really doubt they'll do this. Whoever wins this match, it could be for a number one contendership. For, for Roman Reigns' undisputed title. I really doubt it. But I feel like they're not going to do that. So this pay-per-view to me was an 8. Eight and a half out of ten. Like I said, very good pay per view. Uh, looking forward to what the stories are going to be in the WWE as we get into the road to the Money in the Bank pay per view July first, and I can't wait to be watching that pay per view. So it's pretty much going to do it, guys. Here on this um, Sunday, I know this was a live podcast format. Uh, I might be doing these. Uh, in video format. So. Until then. To Yankee Mad Dog Messiah. I'm out. See you guys later. Fuck the haters. Fuck the trolls. Fuck Roman Reigns. Fuck Vince McMahon. Fuck Braun Strowman. And fuck Joey Janela too. Oh yeah. Dig it. Bia, bia. Yankee Mad Dog Messiah. Signing off.